Salem Village, Massachusetts Bay Colony, 1692. Nine-year-old Betty Paris and her 11-year-old cousin, Abigail Williams, without provocation, started screaming, making guttural noises, crawling under furniture, and contorting their bodies. Although doctors could find no physical disease or sickness, they complained of being pinched and pricked with pins. And soon after, other girls in the village started having similar fits. One of them, 12-year-old Ann Putnam Jr., said that the girls had been afflicted by three women in the village, Sarah Good, Sarah Osborne, and a West Indian slave, Tichuba. The three women, all outcasts, were interrogated, then imprisoned for the crime of witchcraft. That same month, Martha Corey, Rebecca Nurse, Rachel Clinton, and Dorothy Good, the four-year-old daughter of Sarah, were all accused of being witches. Martha and Rebecca were both upstanding members of the church, so if they could be accused of witchcraft, so could anyone else. The accusations started to fly, and on the basis of mere spectral evidence, more warrants were issued, more people were arrested, interrogated, examined, and tortured. Ironically, if the accused confessed, they were released. If not, they had to stand trial before a grand jury. Ultimately, more than 200 people were arrested on the accusation of witchcraft. Of these, 19 were hanged, 5 died in jail, and 1, Giles Corey, an 81-year-old farmer, was crushed to death after refusing to enter a plea. In 1693, after his wife was accused of witchcraft, the governor of Massachusetts Colony ordered the trials to end. In 1702, the General Court of Salem declared that the witch trials were unlawful. October 2020, the Amalgafau Street Team journeyed to Salem to visit the place where so many people died unjustly. This is the story of that journey, and these are the Amalgafau's. Welcome to a place of magic, conspiracy, mystery, and looking for the answers of oddities across the strangeness of this world. These are the Amalgam Files. Ladies, welcome back. Season two, episode one. Yes. We're like, we're like the freaking Rocky movies. <laughs> <laughs> there's just gonna be this is it's gonna be like rocky 217 oh don't say that because some Rocky's of the middle DNA ones like just fell in. off <laughs> <laughs> no it feels good man thank you guys uh again for all of our viewers and all of our listeners um for you know making this a thing in the first place uh giving us some audience and then for you ladies joining us and um you know making this kind of work and all the people who have pitched in the retro guys taryn any, anyone who's uh helped made amalga files uh float along and keep above water and everything you guys are amazing and i am so pumped for season two we are starting off the right way the old, strong. I think. I think yeah real strong um so I, I gotta say i'm very we, we ain't playing around this season no i think this season we're we're, we're starting off pretty good and I, li I like the direction it's going in um so you know thank you guys for just making this possible shout out to um epic airways and amalgamation for uh keeping the lights on and giving us all of you know all the things we have to be able to do these casts and um different trips and everything so shout out to you guys for making this possible and of course our viewers and our listeners because without you guys it wouldn't be nothing so you know, thank you all um amalga files season two episode one on this episode we're going to be talking about i don't know if we could call this a supernatural episode or not because it's really not but we're gonna be talking about the witches of salem and of course witchcraft and of course um the tragedies that happened in salem massachusetts um around 1692 so that's the focus of this show um welcome I am jo joined as always 
by uh, the lovely Jordan Lynn Epperson and your friendly neighborhood Shelby Croto. And um, yeah, so we this is Amount of Files. What we normally do around here is we pick a topic or a topic with lots of other topics attached to it. Uh, just because we like to make our lives complicated. And we like to bring you the 411. We love a good tangent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We love a good tangent. And uh, we like to bring you the 411 and whatever information we can find on the topic and try to discuss it responsibly and without having a point of view or being biased, kind, kind of, you know, taking it from all sides and maybe teaching someone something or learning something new ourselves or sharing some information that someone doesn't have. Because in a lot of instances, I guess that's what makes us human and makes us a community. So that's the focus of this show. We like to bust myths. We like to uh, uncover things, investigate things. Uh, this particular topic, we're going to be talking specifically about the hysteria and tragedies that happen in Salem, Massachusetts, and all the things incumbent and uh, that are connected to that event. Um, we also have a really huge treat in the middle of the show. We're going <laughs> to, right after commercial break, go to some live footage of the Amalga Street crew in Salem, Massachusetts, because it just wasn't good enough this time around for us to do the research. We had to go there and go walk the places where these people were and see the sites and take pictures and witness some of these things firsthand, which hopefully will be a recurring theme as we continue in our seasons of the Amalga Files. So stay tuned, stay up, and make sure you guys pay attention. Um, ladies, welcome back. It's been what, like a whole season? Oh, it's been like a week since I've seen your face, Ian. <laughs> well, lucky you. No. <laughs> well, Shelby's lucky. No. Uh, yeah, uh, I gotta say, it's it's you guys. I miss this. I really do. Even when we're not in between shows, um, even when I'm doing the research, I think about you guys often, or I think about what you guys are doing, or if I'm researching something, I'm I'm, I'm in my head like I bet I bet Jordan's watching this like right now. Or I bet she's reading this like right this way, or she read it already. <laughs> You know, or something like I think about you guys often. Probably. And, yeah, there's, exactly. There's a, good chance, there's a good chance that at some point I've read something about it. Or, or, or glazed over it. So I, I, you know, Jordan just, is the research guru. You know what I'm saying? And that um that that, that togetherness, even when we're not doing a show, is always there. So I got to say, working with you guys has become a highlight of mine. So I look forward to these little chin wags we have about these different things, and it's awesome. You guys are are, are great to work with. Um, so. Now that we are back, uh, what do you guys think about the, oh, what? wait a minute, as is customary, as is customary, we will, we will be announcing our winners from this show and um, last season's ending show, the season um, finale show, we'll be um, announcing the winners for both contests in both shows um, in our next show which we're going to be doing in about a month from now. So you guys just pay attention. Um, don't forget to participate. Still do all of the requirements from the other two shows. And we will be picking both winners on one show. Uh, reason being is because one of the books that we were actually going to buy didn't come out until the middle of October. <laughs> so we have to wait until we get the copy. We don't have a prize. So we're waiting for the prize to come. So what we're going to do is just pick the winners on both winners from this show and the season finale show on the next show. So just pay attention. And um, this giveaway prize for this month, being that it's the month of October and we're talking about witches and everything spooky, uh, the Amalga crew had to make you guys a spooky t-shirt. Now is that Oh my God, I want it. Is that not the coolest <laughs> Freddy shirt ever? Oh, I love it so much. It's a Freddy Krueger profile. And it says stay woke on it. And, um, <laughs> exactly. And like, so you can see my face. But like, <laughs> And if oh. that isn't enough, we're actually going to give you a Freddy Krueger tote as well to put all your cool stuff. And if that's not cool enough, I'm going to be throwing a neck of Freddy Krueger action figure in that bag for you. So, you know, all you can like do. no one participate so I can just get these. So, so we can just walk away. So with. I can no. get these. <laughs> can, can I participate? I can think of a few people who would be really into all of that stuff that are going to be, oh, yeah. you know, Oh, oh yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good we're going to have a good party. So we got to make it good for him this time. We got to give him a little bit of a challenge for this one since we're giving away some dope prizes. Um, hmm, since we are talking about witches, Right? We're talking about witches or accused, alleged witches. <laughs> Let's do the air quote. Don't worry, Jordan. We got the air quotes going for you. We're alleged <laughs> witches. Um, how about this? How about all you guys have to do, our viewers and listeners, let us know 
throughout time who the most interesting witch to you was or which which you thought was the most interesting throughout time of course there's been a lot of them it could be a real one or it could be one from tv fiction doesn't matter um but just let us know which witch you like <laughs> i think that's what we're going to call this contest which witch you like <laughs> which witch you like and um let us know and we'll you know of course read in the comments or if you can email us or however you want a tomato tomato that and we'll get your entries and um let us know why you picked the witch that you picked. Say that three times fast. But um, yeah, <laughs> send us send us that info, and we will pick some lucky winners and give you some awesome amalgam swag, fresh out the amalgam market. So yeah, there you go. There you have it. Um, moving right along into our questions, ladies. I have a plethora of questions. We will try to have a plethora of answers. No, I'm, no, wait a minute. For this one. The questions just kept coming, you know, like, uh, so the yeah, more was, research, the more questions. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's usually like that on most topics, but this one was a little bit different. Like I, I it just seemed the more I learned about this, the more confused I got about why it happened. I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys before. Like usually it's the exact opposite. Usually the more I learn, the more I understand and therefore comes some kind of cathartic, you know, uh, encapsulation of what happened and i'm okay with that but this is like <laughs> like i don't know like you ever see you ever someone ever ask you well can you can this get any stupider like i'm like i'm like going through most of what happened in salem and i'm like yo this can't get any more like it just can't like it just can't get any more worse than what it is so yeah they were just like <laughs> hold my bible <laughs> yeah for real it was like, <laughs> hold my bible it's about to hold our crucifix we can make it even stranger it's like they were really trying to one up it was so nuts but um in general i um, mean i mean this was one that i like i started reading about it and i was like okay i can kind of see how you know this this began but then it was like things were i was reading different events during it and i was like what? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So you got the overall aesthetic of what we're trying to, you know, convey here. Um, okay. My first question. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to, the order in which to ask my questions because some of them could answer themselves if not left up to the correct uh, asking order. All right. Um, the witch trials in and of itself. Obviously, there was a lot of different reasons as to why these things took place. Overall, as you've seen them, not only in the United Kingdom, but in the United States, what do you think was the overall general reason for this? Do you think it was mass hysteria in religion, or do you think it was a lot more about who was targeted by these accusations? Like, be, let's be honest here. Was this about controlling women or was this about being scared that the witches would end us all somehow? Um, Shelby? Um, oh, go ahead, Jordan, you can go first. Well, I, I did read that there were actually quite a few men that were also targeted in it. Um, but it was like three-fourths of the people were women. Right. But there, but there were, in fact, some men. Um, including some of the witches, like, well, the suspected witches' husbands, that it was like, once they found it, once the female was like, oh, no, I didn't do it, then they were like, well, then it must be your husband. And it's like, <laughs> really? Right. Okay. Or, like, they, they targeted children, even. Like, uh, one woman who they found wasn't guilty, they then later on, accused her four-year-old daughter mm. and it's like dude she's four right have you never have you never met a toddler they're all wild and crazy so it's not really that big a stretch right or something <laughs> where we have to you know burn them at the stake or hang them or something no i get it but my, my thing is i guess i guess i must have asked it wrong what i'm saying is do you think that this is blatantly like about controlling women more so than it's about Oh, let's protect I, ourselves from the magic witches that we have never really encountered or seen, or there's been no real evidence of ever. <laughs> I, th I think it was. I think it was less about the religion. I mean, it might have started about the religion, but I think it was less overall about the religion and more about neighbors just, you know, being catty. Okay. 
Okay, as a and, way of like, oh, Jordan's had my weed whacker too long. Uh, her and her husband. You know, you know, you know, you get mad at your neighbor, and you're like, oh, they've got to be a witch. <laughs> it's like, all right, <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> like, and like, just no, jump right into no that conclusion, right? <laughs> <laughs> no wow. substantiation. They just were like, nope, they gotta be a witch. Now, they now, now. It. hold they on, Jordan. <laughs> now, oh, hold on, Jordan. I think you're being a little unfair. You know, I, 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 let's 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 be, you know, if we're gonna do this, let's you know, cover every angle. You know, there was some substantiation and, and some loose evidence. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, but <laughs> they, they eventually, they eventually uh, had a minister, uh, Cotton Mathers, I think it was. I don't know. Oh, hang he, on. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm gonna okay. S- I'm going to stop you right there. All right. What was the preacher's name again? Cotton Mathers. And his father's name was Increase. Uh-uh. See? Uh-uh. 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 No. Nope. Something about that. You know, just some, <laughs> just, he just, you know, I don't know. I don't want to go to that church. Something sounds fishy about no, that. No, no, no. Actually, Cotton, Cotton Mathers, he actually came forward and was like, you can't use spectral evidence as real evidence. It's, there's nothing you can okay. use as substantial evidence. And his father, Increase, was actually the president of Harvard. And he fully supported his son and was like, you have to use the same basis that you use for all crimes in these crimes. It's better to have... 10 uh, suspected witches get away than to be killing and punishing one innocent person. Mm. Because because they had a dream. <laughs> wow. And you know what? I like, I like see, but that's, mm, see, that, I think that's a perfect slot for us to look at the actual contrast between reality and actuality of what was going on at the time. I, I like that. I like the fact that he's like, look, it's better to have 10 suspected witches get away than kill even one innocent person. And I just wish the system actually worked that way. Like, had it would have, a lot of people yeah. would not have died needlessly. You know what I mean? So that's an awesome. Who said that again? Um, I believe that was actually Increase that said that, that made that statement, but it was in support of his son. Uh, the minister named Cotton that um, what Cotton was saying about you can't you can't do this. Okay, all right, and, that's fair. Pe- and people basically like just pushed him to the side and were like, we don't care. And and there was a lot we're, of that going. We're going to do what we want to do. <laughs> and that's and that's and there was a lot of that going on, which actually segues way into my second question. The overall brutality. Well, I didn't answer my question. Oh, no, you didn't. I'm one. sorry, Shel. I'm like, oh, no I'm one wants sorry. to hear Shelby's answer. <laughs> it's just like going to ignore you over there, Shelby. I know, I just, just rolled right over Sitting my here like a, like a lost puppy. Right, Odin? Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> the puppy cues in right on time. No, what, what was your take on that? How do you feel, Shelby? Is it, do you feel like it was more about the, the church? And is this a real thing or was it more okay, this seems like a really easy way to control women. Because in my opinion, I feel like that's who was targeted throughout all of this. So uh, although Jordan is correct, there have been men, children, and who knows, even animals probably held a trial for this. But um, I think that it was probably. like, yeah, but I think it was more geared. Like I could, you know how, like racial it was profiling. Like, it was like three-fourths three fourths of the suspected criminals well, which is whatever you would like to refer to them as, were women. Right. And that, like, it's like racial profiling. That's basically what I'm trying to say is, uh, okay, yeah, it works for the Latinos too, maybe even for the Asians, but we know who we're profiling here. You know what I'm talking about? We know, we know who, right. <laughs> we know who we're looking for. <laughs> like that kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. What do you think, Shelby? Is it, is it more about the religion? I mean, are, you, are we looking for witches flying around on brooms or what? Or is this a real thing or what? What do we got? So I personally think it started off as like a mass hysteria thing because from the research I was doing uh, during that year that it started, they had probably one of the worst recorded winters Mm -hmm. in history. And uh, because of that, like a lot of people were going like stir crazy and stuff like that. And the research I was finding, because the biggest thing is I'm like, what drove these kids to do this and the research i was finding was they actually thought the kids had a fungus in their brain and so there's this fungus called uh rye ergot and yeah 
forms, yeah, it forms hallucinogenic drugs in bread, and it pretty much makes them feel like they're bewitched when they're actually just stoned. And like the fungus thrives in a very cold winter, followed by a wet spring. So they believed that these kids actually like were just high and hallucinating. And then I feel like the adults used that to their advantage. They're like, oh, these kids are like bewitched when actually they're just stoned out of their minds and used it for their own agenda. Because if you look at it, like some of the witches that were accused, like were actually, I, I believe one of the first three women was actually suing the par- like uh, the father of one of the children mm. was, was suing him over like land. And then she all of a sudden was accused. So I think the kids were hallucinating and the parents were kind of directing them like, hey, is is this person a witch? Hey, how oh, about wow. this one? I, I think that one's maybe a witch. So I, I definitely think it started off as like a hysteria type thing. And they used that almost as like a scapegoat to try and target these people. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Shelby, are you saying that what started out as an innocent case of mistaken identity, mass hysteria, are you saying that people actually harnessed and used that towards an evil end? Is that what you're saying happened? That people hmm. would actually stoop that low to do something like that? It, it, it sounds crazy. I, I mean, it's who little, would ever want to do that? It's a little out of character for human beings, Shelby. I, I think right? you're stretching a little bit, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to allow uh, it. I mean, I, I doubt history would repeat itself like again that. Again and again and again. <laughs> again and again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess that kind of that kind of that kind of destroys my third question because that's pretty much <laughs> where I was going to, and that's actually even better way to segue into my third question is um okay so then till now improvement kind of maybe i mean do you see a lot of change maybe not so much in the method but and how we react to certain things as a society especially after coming off of the systemic racism episode and which kind of prompted this episode to happen because it was like there were so many uh, connected undertones to those two events. Like, it's just like, how much have we changed as people? Like, okay, obviously it takes a little more than some kid pointing, you know, to send somebody to the gas chamber, but not that much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There ain't a whole lot more than that. I mean, you need a little more. You know, you need somebody to actually say, okay, you know, stand with competent and trial and point and all of that. And you need some evidence. But how far have we really come, I think, is the real question I'm asking. Um, either one of you ladies could jump in anywhere you want. But that's the question. How far have we come since then, since 1692? Are we, have we civilized ourselves any? Are we still making these same mistakes? Are there still innocent people dying for no reason? Thoughts? Shelby, you want to go first, or you want me to? Um, I'll I'll go ahead and start. Um, no, we have not really changed much. Like, <laughs> well, well, that was easy. No, we have no, not. No, End of we the have show. not. Go home, I mean, everybody. I would, I would agree. <laughs> I mean, just a few a few prime examples. Obviously, like once I feel cancel culture mm. is a very huge thing, and I feel like instead of children, it's the internet that is pointing at people. Mm. And I know when the Me Too movement was a very big thing, they started pointing out like comedians and other actors and stuff, accusing them of like being predators and stuff like that. And I mean, Mm. yes, they did find like a couple people that actually were, but they also almost ruined the career of like innocent people. Like I know, for example, Chris Delia really amazing comedian and people started pointing at him and again it kind of ruined his career for a little bit like he kind of had to step back out of the spotlight Mm. because again that whole cancel culture is a thing and i know it's super big in like the beauty community i mean obviously most people probably know the tati and james charles thing that went on Mm. like and it turns out most of that information was false like pretty much all it takes is one person to point at someone and then everyone just kind of like 
steamrolls with that. Oh, like, mm. Exactly. They're like, oh, that person said it? Yeah, I agree with them. Yep, that, that person's done wrong. Right. And I mean, like you had said, Ian, even now, like with the Black Lives Matter movement, innocent people are still being like accused and murdered. Like, and this is two two prime examples that's happening now in our society today. So it's not something that happened, oh, like a, a couple decades ago or something. No, it's happening right, right now. Now. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Jordan? Yeah, I'd I'd absolutely agree with that. And I mean you even have you even have in like Hollywood people going the opposite direction where it's like you have actors and actresses and models and all of that that are accusing people and then they're basically flipping the script and blacklisting these people who have been abused and are basically out of work and can't do anything about the fact that okay now their careers ruined because they came forward about somebody doing something terrible so it, it's funny you so mentioned that I, Jordan I feel like you have it like going both directions like um, mm-hmm. Brendan Fraser he was one that he had been blacklisted mm-hmm. for a, at least a decade because he had come forward about some uh, I believe it was sexual abuse incidences that he would yeah. uh, yeah it's because he I believe he was being assaulted by he got his wife from or something. Hollywood and he's just now getting to come back to you know acting but a decade is a long time to be gone from acting and out of work in general yeah and it was kind of one of those things where it's like okay well Corey Feldman and Rose McGowan they're a little bit more eccentric and so those those people can kind of play it off like oh they're just crazy but he was pretty on top of his game up until this happened and so they couldn't really play it off like oh Dude's just crazy. Right. So they kind of just had to blackball him altogether. Wow. And it's it's really unfortunate that things like that are happening, but you know at least at least he was trying to do the right thing. You know, and ladies and got caught up in it. it you know, it's ladies. funny you say that, uh, Jordan, because I've noticed that we villainize the victims and then we let the actual villains get away with murder, essentially. Yes, exactly. And it's kind of, it's, it's one or the other. You either end up with somebody who is innocent that is basically having all of this awful stuff said about them, or you have somebody who's innocent who is trying to do something about somebody doing something wrong and they're the one that's catching all of the drama, not the the villain mm-hmm. in our situation. Mm-hmm. Either way, it seems the innocent people, once again, are getting the backlash of this type of stuff. You know, yep. I'm, and the thing, I'm listening to you guys, and I'm glad. I'm so glad I have such awesome hosts on the show with me and uh, that we do this the way we do. But um, I think the part that bothers me the most is more so than from then till now, has it gotten better, has it gotten worse? It's like how it's gotten worse. Is like, there's a system in place now, or a system that has been developed since 1692, that is set up to help protect the people who are perpetrating these wrongs. And it's, yeah. it's like, not only to perpetrate them, but I mean, to, not only to protect them, but to help them perpetrate these wrongs and it's like it's it's scary it's well, scary the, to think that you know from you, you know you think about how far 300 years is 300 years is not a little bit of time like you're talking about legacies and dynasties and over and over and over that have come and gone since this has happened um but the fact that things have gotten worse or exponentially worse wrapped around a decadence i think is is really bothersome for me it really it really makes me feel like where are we going from here if like mass hysteria and someone pointing fingers in these these this, these bullshit allegations and like no one stopped to say well wait a minute you know we need to we need to be really sure before we kill somebody that these kids are bewitched and that you know well, there's some the kind big of thing 
that really threw me off is during the allegations, if you admitted to that being you were a witch, you lived. Yeah. you lived in the people that were like, no, I'm innocent. They were killed. And I'm like, that makes no sense. Not one person that was convicted of being a witch died. Exactly. What? They, they let that... the people go as soon as they agreed with what they were trying to like force upon them and say, oh, you did these things. If you agree with it, we'll let you live. Like, but how does that much, make sense, though? It makes no sense. And like, much okay, if, if you, you agree to, yeah. to the things we're accusing you of, we'll, li we'll let you live. But the people who are innocently you know, claiming their innocence. And that stood them. their ground and said, no, I am being wrongfully convicted. They're like, oh, you you don't want to, like, bend to our will? I guess you're going to die. And, that's what, and you know what? And that's why I asked about the controlling women. And it just seems like that's what this was all about. Like, it was all about power and control. Like, it had nothing to do with, you know, supernatural witches and all. Like, I, I could see if somebody, like, spontaneously combusted or died of some kind of welts and, and, and warts and like, you know, sores all over their body or like something that was completely unexplained happened. Then I could see a bunch of people getting scared and being like, oh, my God, there's, this must be some kind of mystical. But this that's not the case. Like like you said, there were land disputes and catty neighbors and um, gossiping, you know, single women involved and. And you had, you had, like, women that were using, like, herbs in their kitchen. I mean, uh, what, were we just not seasoning anything? I the mean... One woman, no, the one woman <laughs> that was from the Caribbean, they put her in jail for uh, the, the way she seasoned her food. Like, yeah. the, like and the I know... fact that she used, mm -hmm. like, herbs and things that other people didn't, they considered that. Like, imagine you're in your, you're in your kitchen right now making a nice asabuco or something. You're putting together, uh, rubbing a pork shoulder, whatever you got going on. You're Spanish, and they don't do the you pork know, shoulders in the Spanish. You know, this, is, like this is probably this is probably how we ended up with the stereotype of, of white people not ever seasoning their food. Because <laughs> they kill you for it. Because <laughs> they are kill you for it. We're just afraid yeah, of it. Exactly. Like. Yo, you know what? I think we're gonna have to do is some. That, is that some basil? I think not. I think, no. you know, nope. I think that we're gonna have to actually make this an amalgam files uh, expose piece. We're gonna have to actually go back and see <laughs> is this the reason why we have that white people don't season their food? We need to know. Oh, we need to know. This is interesting. <laughs> we need to know. This is you never know. This can really help out later at the cookouts. You know, I'm talking about some people that aren't invited could later be invited if they see that you know there's an error in their ways we could we could you know what? we're gonna have to we're gonna have to investigate that no but in all see no but in all seriousness like it could be that it could be just that a difference simple. in culture like well i know when we hit from, a... you know she's spanish and she doesn't mm -hmm. make her pork shoulder the way i do but because she lives in my village and she's making her pork shoulder different with different herbs i've never seen before i automatically accuse her of being something wrong and, and that right there like if we just stop and pause it at that very moment and look at what's holistically and corely wrong with that, mm -hmm. with the fact that because somebody's different than you or does something different than you or wears something different for you or has different color skin or is a different sex, is a different orientation, whatever, the fact that you're allowed to judge them in that moment or even allow that difference to do anything outside of the interest in it bother you. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. And that's what I think we're glazing over a lot of that in a lot of these instances where we're not allowing ourselves to be humble and look at ourselves because then we end up with dead people. Oh, wait well, a minute. Mm -hmm. Here's this guy. He looks like something that I don't know might, you know, so let me shoot him. Like, how do we go from asking a dude or, <laughs> well, or I know, maybe... Um you one know. of the cases that we learned about in Salem, one of the women, she actually had helped uh the preacher's wife because uh she was like not able to have a child like a child and so she had went to this woman and she said it's just like your period you you have like a certain cycle you're on and had explained to her how a woman's body works and because she knew that that knowledge they're like oh she has to be a witch it can't be that like they, no, they no, hung no. her they actually they, hung yes. that woman yes and they the hung woman that, that woman she helped could have spoke up but she did her not. trial and, and and was so afraid of and it was out she of did. fear and it's because yeah. her husband told her she was not allowed to yeah yeah and it's that easy just for a woman being knowledgeable 
like it it got her killed so here's my thing okay we got our questions out of the way we talked a little bit about the target the discussion i need to know through your research what did you find i mean obviously we're all outraged at this happening as we should be but we're professionals here and and we didn't just do this to em invoke an emotional response we're supposed to be doing all sides of the spectrum so okay we are the lords and masters of that time we are the clergymen the the the, the judges the the governors right where do you where do you stop yourself <laughs> where do you stop yourself as a policy maker or as a move maker a leader where do you stop yourself and say hey wait a minute maybe this ain't the best way to go about doing this you know maybe we could find a better way to go about figuring these things out. Like how, at what point after 30 people are dead, you know, and hundreds of others in different parts of the world, but what, what do you do? Like, well, how do you, how do you feel? What do you think is the next logical step? I mean, obviously none of these steps were taken, but we're then now, right? And we're in charge. At what point do you say, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> hold on, <laughs> wait, 30 people. I mean, your guy comes to you and says, yeah, so we got these 30 people in a jail up here. And um, they're all witches or suspected witches, and we don't know what to do with them. At what point do you say, hold up, let's not hang them all. Let's, what do we do? Do we stop? Do we have some kind of a public, I, I don't know. But some, like, where, where was, how come that was never a thing? Like, well, how come nobody ever stopped to, you know, it was just a lot of hand, oh, I'm going to wash my hands of it, pass it on to this guy, or I'm going to, you know, make it this person's burden, or we'll leave the burden of proof on the church. Or we we'll leave it on the on the courts, and it's like this hand washing and this and this passing the buck, I think is the biggest criminal of all. Like when the system sees that there is obviously something wrong. I mean, thirty people that were just minding their business, sitting in the church pews, or going about the milking their goats, or whatever they were doing yesterday, are now in prison, and nobody stops. Well, it was well. twenty eight people that were killed, but they had imprisoned a hundred people. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm just talking about that. Oh, yeah, but I'm like, you you have to think, like, uh, and out of those people, like, 30% of those people died, and the other people were so scared that they're just like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, a, witch. I'm a witch. Right. <laughs> but, like, so it wasn't that they, like, only, like, 30, 100 people they had all accused and locked up in prison. So I'm like, they didn't even stop it. 30, 40, they kept going. And that is what blows my mind. It took a hundred people. <laughs> what do you think, George? Well, and it's like and it's like at one point they had they had uh, they had accused a woman named Martha Corey, and she said that she was not guilty. And so they moved on to her husband Giles, and he refused to enter a plea at all. So they pressed him to death with stones and killed him. Yeah, I because, remember that. Because he, yeah, that was one of the things we had learned to say. play any part in it at all. And, I mean, you, this all started when you had this new governor that uh, took leadership of the section of play, the place that they were. And then he appointed, you know, these, these different judges or justices or whatever you'd like to refer to them as. And it wasn't until... He was about done with this term, and he really wasn't getting as much support from people anymore. Um, that he was like, "Okay, I guess this was a mistake." Well, and I know one of the uh, other things. Sorry, it, it kept going until they accused his wife. They accused his <laughs> wife of being a witch, and then he's like, "Oh, okay, like no, nope, like we need to stop too this." Far. It, it's gone too far. You, you've you accused my wife. So it kept, it kept going. And there's until absolutely the, yeah. nothing funny about that whatsoever. I'm not laughing because the action is comical. I'm laughing because there's no better example of exactly how, like, you have to kind of, you got to keep it real with something like this all the way around because it's only a matter of time before it reaches you. Like it's only when you allow for this kind of illogical thinking and, and irrational behavior to continue, it's literally a matter of time before your wife is the next, <laughs> you're the governor. And then they're like, hold up. She's a witch too. Oh, wait, but that's my girl. 
<laughs> now she can't be a witch now. She yeah. said to me, you know, we hold up. We need to we need to rethink all of it. You know, I bet at that point, then it started to become, well, hold up now, goddammit. We need to slow down. But like, it's like they were cool with going along with it. You know what I'm saying? Until. Yeah. And it was, it was kind of like at that point, he was just like, uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, I guess everybody in jail can go home now. Our bad. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> And then, like, the judge who had been, the main judge who had been presiding over these cases had to publicly apologize to people. And then it wasn't until, like, I don't know, maybe 15 years later. I think I might pull off my pinky finger just to be in the audience for those apologies. Right? Like, I want to know um, how you I'll, how you wake up that morning. I'll chew off my entire hand, not just my pinky. I mean, <laughs> to be just like to a fly on speech. the wall. I just want to be there. You know what I mean? Just to yeah. hear the speech to, of the guy who had to wake up that morning and be like, um, "Sorry, we murdered your <laughs> what? Your sorry, wife? we it murdered until, your family." It wasn't until like fifteen years later that they actually restored these mostly women, but you know the, the people, the accused witches, good names and paid financial restitution to their families. I mean, even offer to, to, do that, to do that 15 years later, you know, you know that people were still angry oh, yeah. after that. Oh, oh for sure. To, to, and I mean, to have, it, to, to have to 15 years later be like, yeah, so um, remember about that thing that happened a decade and a half ago? So we're going to go ahead and uh, just erase that. I mean, a that, prime. That cool with you guys? Yeah, it'd be better if we never discussed it again. A, Here's some money. A, a prime <laughs> yeah, example. Exactly. A prime example that's going on today is the Brianna Taylor case. Like, how many times? Like, is it going to take us 15 years to seek justice for something that is clearly wrong? And I'm, I'm like, stop you right there because mm -hmm. a, I don't think there's ever going to be justice in these cases, not the way we would like it. Because if you look at Salem as an example, 15 years later, and them giving you some apology and some money, like that's not just like, oh, here, justice take, would be to find one of those take, judges. Take some money. I'm yeah, sorry like, for killing your family. Justice would be to find one of those judges who sentenced those people to die and hang him. That's justice. Well, my you, they, were still, they were still using this as like an allegory. Um, up, in, up until the 1950s, at least, when uh, Joseph McCarthy was talking about everybody was anti-communism uh, and, you know, communist, that person's a communist, that person's a communist, and it basically turned into a witch hunt for communists. And, it, and, it's and, let's not forget how the Jewish, and let's not forget how the Jewish people were treated in Germany. Oh, and, yeah, I mean, and like, if you we, think we about it, haven't come very far. <laughs> and that's and you know, and I'm sitting here listening to you guys. I mean, if you like, think about it, it's still a joke to this day. People would be like, "Oh, you you communist," or "Oh, you Jew." Like right. it's it's still a like a type of slander that people will call one another to this day. I think that's the for me. That's and and I'm so glad that we had a chance to do the investigative side of all of this. But to me, I think that's the scariest part of all of this is that if you look at the overall social 300 years later, 300 years, not 10, not 15, not 20, not even a hundred, 300 years from this event happening the way that it is. And as a society, I can't honestly say, I mean, yeah, we have microwaves now and HBO, you know, we got cars, airplanes, and, and all kind of stuff. Like, we have we have a lot of awesome advancements, but it's like the things that needed to advance the most, the things that we needed to change the most, the things that, that pretty much I feel like will eventually ruin us, we haven't really done much about that. Like, you brought up Brianna Taylor. Why the aliens won't visit us. The, the aliens are smart. If the aliens have a brain in their head, they drove by this, this car and was want to like, not today, Satan. Nope. And you got to think about it. As an alien entity, and, and Ultron from Age of Ultron in the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is a perfect example to what would happen if a higher intelligence encountered human beings. They what would just would see us and be like, mm, 
nope, I don't think so. No, it would, we'd, no, have, we'd, have right. like, we'd have like maybe 20 people that would still be alive, and the whole rest of the world would be disintegrated. Yeah, absolutely. And that would, Ultron's, and that would be about it. Ultron's <laughs> initial response to the human race after literally six seconds of life, he's been alive for six seconds, but he's an ultimate intelligence. And he goes on the internet and decides six seconds. It took him six. <laughs> it took him six seconds of browsing the internet to decide all mankind had to die. Well, and uh, the movie Fifth Element, she did the same thing. Lulu. Oh yeah. Yep. She, she went on the internet and looked on the internet for like 10 minutes and was just sitting there crying and basically tells Corbin, what's the point? Yeah, people, and that's the thing. You just destroy everything. <laughs> and, that's, and, and I think about that. And uh, first of all, my heart goes out to anyone then till now who was even remotely affected by this tragedy in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, anyone who whose family might have been involved or whatever, anything that any way that this event may have negatively affected you, our hearts obviously go out to you, and we're sorry for your you know your inconvenience and your, and, and our condolences for your losses. But you know, three hundred years later, I'm looking at the world and the state that it's in, and you think about the Breonna Taylors of the world, where it's like, hey, we might have murdered your mom, but. Here's twelve million dollars, and sorry, like, yeah, that it's doesn't just bring them back. <laughs> it's just, it's just scary to think like that's, that's the progress we've made as people. It, is that the price of human life? Like, I didn't know you could put a price on someone's life. It's just, I don't know. I, I, I weep for the future, and I'm hoping that podcasts like this and informative shows and and genres that give people a chance to kind of rethink the next time that they make a decision. I hope some U.S. senator or some judge or somebody is, you know, gets this or hears this podcast on the way to work and, you know, says to themselves, you know, you know, you know, maybe maybe I'll rethink something today. Maybe I'll do something a little bit differently. Maybe I'll ask for a little more evidence or be a little more patient or try to be a little more understanding. Or maybe the next time, you know, you encounter somebody with a difference or, 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 or somebody who doesn't do things exactly the way that you do instead of automatically jumping to how uncomfortable uncomfortable that might be maybe try to learn maybe try to assimilate maybe try to you know gain something out of that experience rather than you know just automatically jump the first thing you do is okay let's kill them or let's let's excommunicate them or let's treat them indifferently because they're different like we just got to do better as people and i think that unfortunately stories like this like salem and um, other things that have happened in the in the past and the recent future, um, I think they're slow to teach us, and, I, and I'm hoping that you know we can just convey that message as best we can. Uh, a lot needs to change. We have, I agree with the ladies. We have not come that far from you know 30 people dying for no reason in mass hysteria to okay, what three times that number now? People all over the world dying for nothing. I mean, it's like you said, Ian, we've advanced in technology, but we haven't advanced socially or even mentally. Like, and I'm, I can't figure out why, because I met some while we were in while we were in you know Salem and while we traveled the world. I met some some pretty you know nice people that were worth I, I, all the people in Amalgamania. Now I've met some pretty decent people that are that are worth you know having around you. Like, so it's not impossible. You know, it's not like none of these people exist. I met some great people and some understanding people, people who don't judge. Like, where? what about the other side of this number? Where are these people coming from? And, and who's getting to them first? <laughs> I think is the real question. Well, well, and it's like I told you, Ian. I was like, I mean, chances are me, Karen, Shelby, we would have all been sacrificed as witches. That's, that's all there is to it. Well, I hang with you guys, so... I might <laughs> exactly. I might as well get like, up there with you, and I'm black. <laughs> like if we would have spoke our mind, they're like, ah, nah. She talks too much. Get out of here. Like yeah, like it's. I mean, it, and that's the thing is, we have to just be a little more vigilant about how we judge, or not judging at all. Maybe, maybe just accepting. You know, one of the things that I I, I learned about the Wiccan culture, which is the other downside of this, which we haven't really touched too much on, but the Wiccan culture in general um, is basically just old world science and mysticism used in 
prayer ritual. A lot, a lot of it's based in like nature. Right. A lot of it has it, nothing to do really with like conventional magic. It's a really fascinating like, magic, religion you know and culture saying? and stuff too. Yeah. But one of their sayings, and it's something that has really stuck with me. Um, I actually got a chance to talk to a witch for a little bit. She did not want to be um, on camera, but we talked for a bit and she actually wanted uh, to rename, I mean, to remain um, anonymous. But we did talk for a bit. And um, one thing I have learned about the Wiccan culture and one thing that I think is very interesting is one of their main monikers is if it harms none, do as you will. Yeah, and uh, I know right now there's a big thing with like a bunch of, um, they're, they're referred to as baby witches. Um, mm -hmm. And it's basically new witches that are uh, coming coming on the scene because a lot of it's coming from TikTok. They see, oh, you know, there's an entire the like subculture. And stuff and they think it's cool, so they're coming in, but they're not actually doing their research first. And so they're making a lot of, like, dangerous mistakes that the established witches are like, mm, mm, we need to talk. See, um, this is what we need the witch trials for. No. And I mean, so but, something... <laughs> but it's like, you had, you had this whole group of baby witches that were like, oh, we're going to go hex the fae. Oh, wow. And it's like, mm, mm, that's that's not a good idea. No. And then they were like, oh, we're going to hex the moon. And it's like, Really? You think you think this is a good idea? Like the first thing you learn is that if you do harm in in witchcraft, like casting spells that do harm, it comes back on you like ten times, ten mm -hmm. tenfold, and you're gonna have to pay for that. I mean, and that and was one. A lot of them aren't doing that research, and they're just thinking, you know, oh, it's a bunch of fun, you know, casting spells with that and the other thing. It's like, hmm, you need to you need to look it up before you actually start doing stuff like this or ask questions mm -hmm. because this could this could end up being a big mistake. And they ended up with uh, one woman when they were doing the, the hexing the moon thing that she ended up dying mm. uh, under very uh, mysterious circumstances. And a bunch of the baby witches then were basically like, we're sorry, we're sorry. And it's like, well, it's a little late now. Bottom line, when it comes, I mean, for those real witches, the bottom line, I think it comes down to, um, you know, if you're going to practice a religion or a faith, you know, do it with respect. And anything they were just that, selling anything them. that you don't well, fully understand. I don't care what it is. Anything well, you don't even, fully understand is dangerous. Even if you have good intentions for what you're doing, if you're not, you know, fully aware of what's happening and being careful, I mean, something can still go wrong. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I have a friend who was telling me about uh, an acquaintance of ours. Um, she has a twin sister, and the one twin, she had started practicing witchcraft, and um, she her, her, her twin sister had fallen on some financial struggles and all of that, and so she had cast a spell for her sister to uh, basically come into some money. Well, the sister did come into some money, but in order to do that, she ended up getting in a really bad car accident. And uh, basically ended up suing the other person, and that's how she came into the money. But it was like, because she hadn't been specific enough with her request and her spell, it, was, it just left it up to the universe to figure out what it was going to do. Or how it was going to check that balance, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, witches, warlocks, magic users of all, you know, you know, sizes and shapes, listen, I don't care what you, what you think you might be able to, you know, do with these different arts and sciences or what you think you might be able to manipulate. But understand, I think what Jordan just said is trying to say, I think the overall aesthetic of what she's saying is that even in practicing these things with expertise or novice, you know, it doesn't matter. You have to be very careful with how you decide to deal with something as, you know, boundless as nature or earth itself or, 
anything like that, you might want to be a little careful about how you decide to, you know, because we as people, we are very vain and stupid. And because of our intelligence and our ability, we automatically go into a situation sometimes thinking we know what we're dealing with. And you know, maybe just taking a second, and I think that goes for all people, maybe just taking a second to reflect on what it is you're actually dealing with before you jump out there and deal with it, I think will save a lot of people a lot of grief. <laughs> and maybe the moon won't get hexed <laughs> in the process. Um, I think that wraps us up nicely before we go into our commercial break and our live footage from Salem, Massachusetts. I just wanted to say thank you to both Jordan Lynn Epperson and Shelby Croto for helping me host this this half of the cast. And um, our next episode is going to entail overall mysticism. We're going to be talking about um, tarot card reading, psychics, uh, being able to tell the future. Is it real? Is it not? We're going to actually have some special guests on. So uh, stay tuned and um, enjoy this commercial break. And then we're going to go into the second half of the cast where we go live to Salem, Massachusetts with the Amalga Street team. It's going to be a good time. Um, there was a lot of awesome pictures as well. There's going to be a slideshow available for you guys in this video. So definitely check that out as well. And, uh, we also have a little bit of an announcement. This show and all the other shows in the Epic Airways family are going to be participating in the Amalga Scarathon. This is our first podcasting event on Epic Airwaves and throughout um, Epic Tales and Amalgacast, Amalga Files, where um, there's going to be a phrase given. Um, each cast is going to be giving you one word for that phrase. You're going to watch each or listen to the cast or watch the VOGs and um, get the words, put them all together, and then there's going to be some awesome prizes. You ladies want to talk a little bit about what's going to be given away? Um. So... It for the Scarathon, they're going to be giving away a really awesome uh, Amalgamania Scarathon t-shirt, um, some really cool mugs, and some action figures. So pretty much like Ian said, uh, everyone has one word. We're going to be giving you our word here in a second. But when you find that word, you're going to message Andy Doyle on Facebook or shoot him an email and tell him what the word is. And you're going to say what podcast you got it from. And essentially, Ooh. whoever can put the sentence together first wins all the awesome goodies. And I know they got some T-shirts. I know they got uh, action figures, some coffee mugs, um, all kinds of stuff. So this is not just like one prize. I think I think it's like five or six really good items. So if you guys want to participate, our word, Jordan Lynn Epperson, if you don't mind, you can go ahead and give it to him. Our word is your, Y-O-U-R. Again. For the Amalga Files and the Amalga Scarathon, uh, I'm sorry, the Epic Airway Scarathon, um, our word is your, Y-O-U-R. So add that up to all the other words that you got throughout the rest of the cast, put them together, and go and get you some prizes. And good luck. I know I'm going to be competing, so good luck. No. <laughs> <laughs> everybody I hope you get it and um shout out to the guys who put this um epic airways uh the podcast scarathon together that's pretty dope so thank you guys for doing that for all of us um i can't wait to see what the phrase is gonna be so you now we're looking forward to it and uh we'll catch you guys at the winter circle <laughs> um well ladies i gotta say i think that this is a great way to segue into our um the second half of our cast the actual street team being live in um salem massachusetts and some of the thoughts and feelings we got from being up there. So stay tuned. You guys are going to love that. Uh, we're going to pay some bills. We're going to give a shout out to um, Amalgamation and Epic Airways podcast for keeping the lights on here. Um, we're going to join a, a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back with the second half of the show. Um, do you ladies have any closing thoughts or anything you'd like to send, send our audience off with before we go into the second half of our show? Don't hex the moon. Yeah, don't hex. <laughs> please don't hex. Please, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> Good call. Good call. <laughs> no, no, no pentagrams in the in the makeup mirror with the lipstick. Nah. Don't do it. And like if you want to get into being a wicked and stuff like that, please do your research. Talk please to talk. a real witch. Exactly. Talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. There's people who a, don't an scare established you. Established witch. Exactly. Not don't, do don't do it for novelty. Don't do it for for clicks. Yeah. Like please be safe. There there are actually Facebook groups out there for new witches to join that are run by established witches that 
they can, you know, ask questions mm-hmm. and be taught this stuff and not just, you know, fly in blind. Okay. So if you're thinking about <laughs> being a witch, you might want to find, you know, one of these groups or find somebody who's established so you can learn from it before you make some mistakes. Don't ask the Puritans. It's not going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> not going to go well for we, you. We apparently have learned nothing from them. They so. learned nothing at all. Uh, that does it for this half of the Amalgam cast. Enjoy your second half. And uh, shout out to the Epic Airways Podcast Network and for Amalgamation as well. And uh, we'll see you guys right after this second half of the show. It's time for the first annual Epic Airways Podcast Network Scarathon. Eight great podcasts. Nine amazing episodes, one epic prize to win. Listen for the keywords in each episode, then put all words together to form a single sentence. From October 22nd till Fright Night itself, October 31st, listen to these great shows. Amalga Cast, Amalga Files, Epic Tales Podcast, Epic Tales of Darkness, Epic Tales from the sewers, Retro Red Octopus, those not so super dudes, and Throwdown Thursday. Be sure to check out the post in Amalgamania for official rules, details, and prize. Good luck and stay creepy. Welcome, Amalgamaniacs, to your very first installment of our on-site Amount of Files. Um, this is a very special episode. Um, I am the boy wonderful Ian Wallace, your friendly neighborhood Shelby Croto. We have Jessica Jacusco <laughs> and <laughs> Johan Kumba. And we are all in the house to bring you some uh, information and let you know what this episode is all about. As you all know from our last cast, um, we were going to be doing an expose on the Salem Witch Trials, talking not only about the supernatural side of it, but also talking about some of the more real and human side and legal sides of everything that happened in New England during that time time period. Um, this crew is going to be actually traveling to the actual site of Salem, Massachusetts. We are now in uh, Bedford. Bedford, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. um, at the fabulous DoubleTree Hilton Hotel. Mm-hmm. Very Ooh. swing. Very look, nice look at hotel. This. This nice background oh, yeah, we've got, yeah, right? Yeah. I know, we got some nice background with <laughs> All to ourselves, and it's a, a pretty good experience. Uh, we're in a cordoned off area. We're, we're being very safe. Um, there are some other guests kind Someone's of. Someone's not six feet away from me right to, now. Though, right, yeah, we're, we're, we're not practicing social distancing <laughs> <laughs> because of the camera angle, but we are being safe with the other pedestrians and people at the hotel. So remember to stay safe. And um, so we're going to talk a little bit about Salem, Massachusetts, what brought right. us here, mm-hmm. why we're going, and. Our, our expectations, I guess? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, initially, uh, it was brought up, uh, of course, the more supernatural side being that witches were involved and uh, Salem always gets that kind of rep and we figured that we would do a little more information about mm-hmm. what was really going on and the more context and, and real side of it. So it's more of a expose, impose kind of piece. So we're doing a little bit of both. So. Um, that's what personally made me want to do the topic is just, I think that there's a lot of light that isn't being shed on some of the more common parts and, mm-hmm. and a lot more light being shed on the supernatural parts. And I think mm-hmm. we're going to get to all of that later on as well. Mm-hmm. So um, that's my initial gripe and the reason why I wanted to um, come up and see Salem. What about you guys? Don't be shy, everybody just jumping all in at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, for me personally, the only thing I really know about Salem is stuff I've seen from movies like obviously mm-hmm. everyone knows hocus pocus mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. and like social media and stuff like that so i never really knew what actually happened like the more realistic type things not just like the fiction and stuff from like most books and movies and stuff so my expectations was to see like what actually happened mm-hmm. and to find out what the real story is okay. um so mine i mean growing up in new england like this is you talk about Salem like it is we have like claimed it as our own even though I'm Connecticut not Massachusetts and we have um, I think New England seat, but it's I fine. think all but New like, England states are cousins at this point oh yeah like, we, we claim the accomplishments of each other but at the same time we're like get away from me how dare you even associate like siblings yourself. hey they got a Pepe's pizza out here I mean, you know what I'm saying I think we can claim right. it a- apparently right. it wasn't that, that's what that good though right so it wasn't like the one in New Haven. Exactly. <laughs> so, 
Um, yeah, so I mean, I always grew up in school, we would always talk about Salem Witch Trials. Literally, when it would come up, we were like, we know, like, okay, let's get to... And I have a lot of, like, memorabilia from being up here, crazy enough. Field um, trips. I think, right, exactly. Trips, like, yeah. I have, like, gift bags and everything. Um, but I didn't remember a lot. And so I, when I heard that, like, we're going to be coming up here, I was like, yes, because that was on my bucket list. And I knew... It would be one of those things like I'll I'll, I'll get to it even right. though I live Eventually, right here, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'll I'll get to it one day. So okay, Johan. Well, yes, from my perspective, from everything that's been going on. Talk loud. Well, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's I don't want the witch to hear me. So <laughs> <laughs> I know microphone over there. This is completely new to me. Um, in when it, in regards to over here in the states, um, I'm more familiar with the white and black magic of where I come from, down in Puerto Rico and the island. And it's nice to know where the roots came from, from over here, from the perspective of the States. You know, there's always different types of different magics, but it was really nice to see how it would be to be in Salem. Never been here, beautiful place. It's, um, it's definitely something that I've been wanting to do. Me and Jessica has been wanting to do this for a while now, and then Ian just so happened to call me once and said, hey, do you want to go to Salem? And it was a dream come true. And <laughs> here we are in this fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to burn. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we all have the general consensus and our own reasons why we'd like to go to Salem and visit. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the expectation is all of us is to learn and to uh, gain whatever we can from seeing the sites and taking in some of the more picturesque. Areas. The, new, the New England experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. we're, and this is October that we're up here, so bonus, we get the to see full New England, New England, uh, New England oh Falls. So it's like it's a couple beautiful. weeks before Halloween, and we are literally mm -hmm. going to be in Salem. And the tour that we're going to be taking is at night, so we're going to have some pictures of the mm -hmm. of Salem during the day, mm -hmm. but we're also going to have some very picturesque and beautiful pictures of Salem at night. So yes. you guys are getting all the <laughs> treats. I think our I think our viewers and listeners are getting all the oh, treats yeah. this trip. So yeah. we're putting in the work for you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> so thank you all for uh, joining us. And mm -hmm. also, I do have a couple of questions real quick before we uh, sign off oh. and do our after because we're going to come back later on in this yeah, cast yeah. and give you an after effect of being in Salem and what mm -hmm. we saw and mm -hmm. give you some of that as well. So mm -hmm. um, real quick about the Salem witch trial. Some of you know what really happened out there so, or, or have some information or a good idea of how things transpired in Salem at the time that they did, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, what about that to you personally was the most interesting? And I mean, what aspect of it? Was it the legal side? Was it the more supernatural side? Was mm -hmm. it the, who was persecuted? Why it was persecuted? What was done to him? Where it was done to him? What about those situations most interest you? You wanna go first? Yes. Go. About the one thing that interests me interests me the most is the fact of being the history of it knowing the little bit that I know is that all the trials were for not because nobody really was a witch but what if there was really a witch and they didn't really know what if they actually went they killed 99% of them were innocent but what if really what if one of them wasn't Okay, so that so that to intrigues find out. me. Okay, that completely intrigues. Okay, me. okay. What if it wasn't all for not? Yeah. Okay. What if they actually right, saved themselves? Some what if there was like a that? real supernatural yes. um, element to what was going on? Okay. All right. Fair enough. Hey, mm -hmm. the devil's got to have an advocate too. Mm -hmm. That's what we do around here on the Malga Files. I think. I think yeah, we kind of do so. devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah, right. We got hate mail that says so. Uh, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> ladies, what do you guys think? Most interested about what about the Salem witch trials most interest you? How like severely based around Christianity it is, which mm. I mean, I, I feel like I'm gonna get. So you gonna so, go there? So I am. Okay. Oh, I am. All right. All right. I'm all right. Gonna, she gonna get right ooh, to the meat and potatoes. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead, Jess. Just, go, it, Jess. Like, I mean, I feel I feel very passionately about certain things and how just. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to get all into this. No, I feel it's like okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a tangent. Okay, no, no, no. I, I, I think I get the. I think I get the overall aesthetic. Christianity, right. in and of itself, seems to be, or no, you know what? I'm gonna be a, even a little more broader. Okay. Religion, in and of Correct. itself, seems right. to be at the root of a lot of these issues and things. So right. yeah. it's just right. amazing That's that what, this is yeah. just one that more it, thing. So it, it kind of seemed like 
the whole situation I don't want to say began but like a lot of it was all based around like you know well the devil did this and the, you know now we must ask God to who who is who is causing this problem and all of this when for you know like they said for what it seems everybody was winding their own business <laughs> and people came up one day and was like uh you you've been causing all the problems you right there so he gonna kill you right and then all the problems gonna go away and then they didn't right. and because they were like oh these children were acting crazy and of course me being medical i'm thinking in my mind they're like oh they're speaking different tongues and i'm like what kind of type of psychosis could this be like what what did they ever find out why these kids were acting like this or all of history has real, everyone was there any real evidence right has contrary? everyone always chalked it up to oh they're you know this this was just Salem with trials or like did they literally have something mentally like did a did something happen in their brain like say uh um uh, what's the word i'm trying to look for was there any real like affliction a, of a mental or physical affliction right I mean, like some kind of illness died. that came yes, on because yes. it was the 1600s right. everyone there, died of everything people were very <laughs> ignorant at that time too as far as medical it, science it's and, a good and thing social media science. didn't exist then because then everybody Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> everyone <laughs> would have died all right so it was <laughs> basically more the religious aspect is what most interested you yeah like just the, the, the i guess the reasoning behind everything okay, fair enough yeah mm -hmm. shelby I feel like I'm a good combination of both of them. Okay. Like I'm always curious on the more like supernatural like side of things. I'm always curious like is that stuff really true? Cuz obviously I'm a huge skeptic. I'm like mm, I don't know, but then also I want to know what was it that pushed these children to that breaking point to think, mm -hmm. "Oh, I'm going to do this for fun, for sport." Like mm -hmm. what it makes no sense to me. Just these group of girls thinking oh, we're gonna, like, get all these people killed for fun, and then later on be like, ha-ha, it was a joke, guys. I'm right, like, after, the, after it, doesn't make murdered, yeah. right. it doesn't make sense to me. So I'm like, was there something mentally wrong with them, like she was saying? Right. I'm like, What if they were what, the actual witches? Or something. I'm like, what could cause... Did they ever kill children? Did they ever kill the children? Was, any of the, was anyone executed? I think, well, I think they're... Like the, we the, can the find things. out the information on who the youngest of the executed was. Yeah, that's I'm not what sure I'm like. Because I... Was person. it all oh, adults? Seven. I know or? one of them... I do know... I do know one of them was fairly young. I mean, in his... 18, okay. In between 18 and, tw and his 22. Well, no, that's... That, well, I know, I, well, I know back then that's considered like an adult. Adult. Though. Well, 14, right, you yeah, were able to make certain exactly. decisions. So, yeah. Oh, right. And, but okay. these were the Puritans, but we'll have that information. Yeah. So, was that we it will, for you? Will, a little combination of that. Oh, yeah, it's a little combination of both. We will All right, for me, I think it's... Um, uh, my, my interest in this snowballed from the systemic racism. Um, the podcast right. we podcast that we yeah, did right. on systemic racism. Right. I think that overall, kind of a lot of the uh, home points in that uh, mm -hmm. podcast really drove me mm -hmm. to the more persecution side mm -hmm. and how right. these people were treated, and it looked right. like it stung different. Right. Like I, I remember this story. I remember uh, the tours and uh, mm -hmm. field trips in junior high from mm -hmm. Connecticut up here to see. You know, I remember right. those right. things. Right. So. Right. It wasn't the same experience. It was more right. like the more supernatural side of it mm -hmm. was more intriguing right. and pulling back then. But it's like now, I'm a little bit more into the legal side of things mm -hmm. and a little more earthy side of what was what was really going on. What were these people all really going through at this time? And it really mm -hmm. grabbed me once I started to pay attention to how women in general were treated mm -hmm. during this period. Right. And then it kind of focused for me on that. And that was really my main interest was just I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of get into the meat and potatoes of how did this go from a small New England town that was not fully developed to right. literally spreading like wildfire all over mm -hmm. the New England countryside at that right. point. How did it go from Went that to down that? In history. And, what, and who benefited from it? Right. Who benefited yeah. from it? Who got right. who, who had the upper mm -hmm. hand because all this stuff was going mm -hmm. on? Because some people did. The churches, <laughs> rich people. Oh, um, but <laughs> my point is, <laughs> my point is, regardless to whoever did benefit and whoever did end up coming, I think that's what I'm really hunting for. Right. That's what I'm really looking for. So, right. absolutely. I, I can't think, wait to get up yeah. there to find out. I know. I think we really got like each aspect. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait for the after. I think right. the, I think the before yeah. is good, but I'm right. really looking forward. Once to we get after. those answers, listen. So, oh, I'm gonna have a notebook. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Take some the next notes. time you see us on screen, mm -hmm. it will be after we have already been to Salem for our nighttime museum tour.
in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I mean, what else do you need? You got a bunch of amalgamaniacs, good looking mm -hmm. amalgamaniacs, if I might you. say mm -hmm. so myself. You also have Salem, Massachusetts, New England. Who doesn't love New England in the fall? Patriots. Go ahead, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Anyone? Anyone? No? Good. If you raised your hand, so go away. Put right? Put like, it down. Go away. We have the beautiful Double Tree Hilton Hotel. I mean, good pizza, good everything, good company. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go learn something. So the next time you see us, we're going to have some awesome information for you. We're going to let you guys know what mm -hmm. our experience was like in Salem at night, in a fall day in new england <laughs> and you guys are going to have all the results we're going to have great pictures lots of awesome footage and a whole bunch of information we will be joined mm -hmm. by our very own jordan lynn epperson or as i like to call her these days mama bear Ooh. will be in the house and um we'll be also going over the more expose side of mm -hmm. the salem witch trials as well so you guys got a lot of goodies mm -hmm. coming up we have some giveaways we have some awesome interactive stuff going on so just pay attention stay tuned and we'll see you on the next recording Greetings, Amalgamaniacs. <laughs> this is your Amalgophile Street Crew. We're about to go into the Salem Witch Museum and learn something about witches and a little bit about Salem, Massachusetts. So stay tuned. There's going to be lots of awesome footage, and I will let you know when we find out where we're going. file street crew um after a long night of haunting spookiness and mm -hmm. liquid fun we are all in one piece <laughs> we are all oh, still yeah. in one piece and unbewitched here to bring you the 411 on what we learned what we saw how we feel about it and um a brief conclusion to our trip in massachusetts because we're all going home today sad faces mm -hmm. nah. <laughs> so um okay so we went to Salem, Massachusetts, obviously. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk <laughs> decorum or attraction or what was, what, mm -hmm. what did you guys see? Let's first get oh. an impression of what we saw. Okay, fair. Before we, I'm like, where, where do we start? Um, the ladies, please, ladies first. Okay, so I mean, it is a very festive town, mm. put that way. Um, but I feel like looking at it from when we were younger on, on the school trips and everything versus now, it there are a lot of things that seem to attract more. Like there was like Instagram walls and just a lot of more Halloween. And I mean, well, I understand because you, you think Massachusetts, you think Halloween, you think Salem. It was like... I, honestly, you know what? I felt like I was at a con. I felt like wow. I was at a con because like a so con or something. right mm -hmm. because so many people were dressed up as so many different things. Someone was dressed up as um, Ghostbusters. You saw him and, on the uh, walking yeah. trail. Yep, and then we, me and you, ran into the guy from Saw. Saw. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the right. little doll guy with yeah. the tricycle, which yeah. was a girl. That was pretty awesome. That's cool. That was cool. Right. And so, the effort, I don't think, I don't know, I, and just to be a little clear, I don't think what Jess is saying as far as the dressing up was the issue. I think right. what, it, what she's saying is that for what that town should stand for and what that time period right. and things that happen stand mm -hmm. for, it's not like a celebrative 
festive kind of thing and it was like 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 yeah i got that comic-con vibe like it was mm-hmm. like everybody was kind of hanging out and just, well i think what you're trying to say is it went commercial it's a tourist trap yeah it has right. turned from something yeah. i think a very natural a very um honest real thing that happened in american history yeah. mm-hmm. and i think they turned it into like okay gettysburg Mm-hmm. Anyone who's been to Gettysburg knows they do the reenactments, mm-hmm. this, that, and the third, which mm-hmm. that makes a lot more sense to me because they're retelling what happened in that time of, um, in that period of um, history, mm-hmm. which, okay, I can get why people will get excited and get into it, but it was like, I didn't see any colonial women, you know, uh, um, costumes or any, like, uh, mm-hmm. right. you know, uh, anything indicative of witches except for the guys with the pointy hats that were walking down the street. Like, I didn't see anything uh, mm-hmm. that was like, real like it was just like right, oh, it was like right. more fantasy and like let's have fun with this which i get right. it's a time of year spooky season you know let's let's do our spooky thing but it's like 28 people were murdered here right unjustly mm-hmm. like i don't right. get the like let's dress up as ghostbusters i don't understand like that mm-hmm. where that connection means <laughs> like right, how do you get right. there so it, i could definitely uh, relate. really right like they they mentioned one of the first things they said where we you know and that i could hear everywhere that there was you know some sort of telling of what was going on was there was no real witches these were regular people that mm-hmm. were murdered mm-hmm. but then everyone's dressing up like a comical witch and you look like you're in hocus pocus mm-hmm. <laughs> right and that i i get yeah. that, I, that yes. I think that contrast is um it's a hard contrast for us, especially being not only that, like our goals for being a street team, but knowing why we were here in the first place mm-hmm. and what we were doing here. Well, I know um, another big thing that we had noticed is so after you go through the tour or whatever you want to call it, the, the in, one that we specifically yes, went through. in <laughs> the gift shop, they were selling Wiccan books, they were selling yeah. tarot cards. I'm pretty sure they were selling Ouija boards too. Okay. And Harry Potter stuff. Harry Potter stuff, Wizard Hocus of Oz Hocus stuff. Th- like they were selling stuff that shouldn't have really they had wands yeah wands so they were playing into that like oh wizard stuff we're talking about witches so i'm gonna sell harry potter like wizard of oz stuff but then yeah. they were selling like real stuff like wiccans it's like it, a real was, religion like right. real books and right. like real people died over real it. <laughs> like, right. there was so many and books it, that were like oh like how to become a beginner wiccan and i was like oh. That's a little much, and, like, they were selling herbs and, like, right. stones. telling you, like, what they're, like, I can understand, because in one of the, in the second exhibit that we mm-hmm. wanted to, there was, And this um, was at the Salem Witch Museum, by the way. Yes. 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 We, we only went to one, um, one, one museum, and that was yeah. the Salem Witch Museum, uh, because mm-hmm. it had a guided tour and some other stuff. Uh, we weren't allowed to take pictures, which right, no was pictures, a no huge video, deal. no audio. Yeah, which yeah. was kind of a huge deal for me because uh, I mean, it supposedly being a museum, I thought maybe we would be able to co- record some of the artifacts. But luckily right. for us, there were no artifacts. So right. It worked so, out right. great. <laughs> Essentially, we had walked in, and the entire room was filled with like wax statues. Yeah. We thought they were going to be animated or something. Like no, they just stood there and they pretty much went around mm-hmm. and told the story that. We all already, already know. Knew. Mm-hmm. Like, like so, you could Google, literally. Right. So it was kind of, yeah. so to me, it was um, a little lackluster. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, this does not take away from the overall aesthetic of trying to educate and right. or mm-hmm. show people, you know, different artifacts. Yeah. That so I mean, for period. people that don't already know the story and stuff like that, it, it's kind of cool. But I feel like they missed the ball a little bit. I they definitely could have did a lot more with it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I was. She just pointed out what I was gonna say because since I didn't really know much about it, me seeing it and learning from it was nice. It was good, mm-hmm. but it's just a lesson to you guys that if you're new to it, that's fine. You can mm-hmm. go to it. It's exciting, mm-hmm. at least for me. It wasn't crazy, but it was nice to see. But if you already know the simplicity behind it, mm-hmm. the, you know what everyone else knows, then as from their experience, you already know you don't really need to go that route because, well, you'll just be setting yourself up for disappointment. I would recommend a self-guided walking tour and or historical tour, which gonna, is what we're right. going to do on our second <laughs> run around. Right. So I was going to say done. that or do the Peabody Museum because something that is as historic as a Peabody in the Northeast, I would mm-hmm. assume that because from what I read, they literally bought every single artifact. They were out here like, yeah, buying up everything. Everything, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so... You know, if you want to see like um, physical 
pieces of history like like what we were looking for, I feel like that's in the Peabody. Unfortunately, there was disclaimer: like, mm-hmm. the Peabody Museum, if you are coming from out of state, does require COVID testing. Yeah, right. um, so that's so where we wanted coming, to go originally right, because we didn't have the COVID test, or it would have taken days to get results from COVID testing, so mm-hmm. we would have missed it our window anyway. But right. just a heads up for those that are traveling to Massachusetts to visit Salem: if you're going to the Peabody, you're going to need a COVID test before you show up if you're coming from a high risk state. So mm-hmm. right, and you can look up on Massachusetts website what the high-risk states are um basically most of the northeast is excluded like what i could tell like our little corner they're just like oh we're all friends it's okay high-risk states in uh anywhere like in in new england include everywhere but new england (laughs) 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 just to break it just to give you guys a little bit of break down but in new england it's a high-risk state yeah like the map was literally like all of it was like connecticut you know new york rhode island new hampshire maine vermont like that was all white and everything else was red right like (laughs) hawaii alaska (laughs) everywhere else it was like you cannot come here all right so now that we um got a pretty good idea of Mm -hmm. or we explained how we felt about the more the decorum and what we saw in the museum um and obviously it was a little lackluster what about the people how did you feel about the people? Did you guys get any energy? Did you guys feel anything when you were Mr. Flute. Oh, I, I, Mr. Flute. Up, yes. I wanted to bring up. I wanted to bring I up do. something that yeah. I thought was really awesome. We um, obviously, after the lackluster museum tour, mm-hmm. we decided that we wanted to do something that was a little more luster. So we, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we um, decided to walk the town of Salem at night, which was a beautiful experience in and mm-hmm. of itself. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, I gotta say, I think the people really really did it for me. The people in general really made it a better experience outside of not being able to um, share the full experience of a guided tour. I would say that the people really, really made it down home for me and really, you know, hit it home. They were just really nice and interactive. And I mean, it's New England. You gotta love the people. But um, I think more so it was like, I didn't get so much festive. There were just kind of people doing their thing. And as we were walking, there was this um, gentleman playing uh, uh, Cherokee mating flute. Yes. yes. And it was such a We'll, we'll be dropping sound. a video of him in here. Oh, absolutely. You'll be oh, seeing yeah. that. just such a beautiful sound like cutting through the night's air and like Mm -hmm. it kind of pulls you towards it it was just Mm -hmm. you had that and you had people um just walking back and forth and i remember that one stone exhibit we were taking pictures of there was just kind of like a couple people gathered i think there was a restaurant or a bar something behind it Mm -hmm. but it was just um it was a really good feeling like i I think Mm -hmm. that it was um comfortable and definitely Mm -hmm. something that i would revisit just for that experience like i would definitely uh, if I was in Massachusetts, stop in downtown Salem just to kind of get that euphoric uh, vibe from the people. So I thought that was right. kind of uh, dope. So shout out to all the residents and visitors to Salem this weekend, the, the weekend of the 16th. You guys kind of made it a, a dope experience. So thanks for that. What about you guys? Was there anything overall that you feel like you'd like to mention as far as um, our experience visiting Salem? It was just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like, so that was the big thing, especially seeing it at night. <laughs> Like, the first thing I saw was, like, so all the residents in Salem, they all go all out all during, the houses, during this the time. Houses? All the houses oh were, like, gosh. lit up and decorated and stuff. I thought one oh. of the houses was on fire because every single yeah. light was orange. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Every single light was lit up. Like, it was just super beautiful. And I know, obviously, we're going to drop some pictures and stuff so yeah. you guys can see what we saw at night. Right. And it, it's definitely a different experience, I think, than it will be, like, during the day. Right. Yeah. Yes. Definitely yeah. go at night. Yeah. Right. Try to make it that that two part trip like we are, even though yeah, we didn't intend it. We didn't intend that it that way, way but it <laughs> yeah. worked out. Though. So right. okay, um, in closing, okay, obviously there's a lot of different points of view, and we're gonna get more into the the cast end of it and talk discussion. You guys are gonna actually phone in on that one. We're gonna make sure you guys okay. phone in on that. Mm-hmm. But um, um, we talked a little bit about what interested us in the Salem Witch Trials, and we kind of all gave our mm-hmm. idea of what we thought about the uh, inciting incidents. Mm-hmm. Has anything changed for you 
since being in the historical town, seeing kind of the area where all this stuff happened, have you, has any of your points of view or anything that you felt before been amplified and or decreased by your experience coming to Salem? Mm-hmm. Like whatever you were thinking before. I know for me personally, um, it has definitely made me want to know more. I think I, I think I want to be reminded of, you know, how easily a group of people can right. turn in on themselves if the situation called for it, mm-hmm. and also mm-hmm. how people die because of it. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's something. Uh, what's the saying? I know you, you, me, you and I have said this to each other a couple of different times. If you are careful not to understand your past, you're doomed to repeat it. Yes. Yeah. And that's my overall thing, especially mm-hmm. in the climate, the social climate that we're in, mm-hmm. and as a country and as a people, I just mm-hmm. feel like, especially in this country, that's something that we really need to focus on. Mm-hmm. How quickly can something that simple, you know, people try to have fun and do something for sports turn into 28 people be being murdered? Yeah. yeah. This is a pretty well-rounded trip. I feel like we've gotten a lot of good information. I feel like we have a lot of great experiences and we're not mm-hmm. quite done yet. Not yet. Still got a little bit of ground to come. But after we're done with that, I think that I'm gonna go ahead and shift into a more of an investigation, investigative end of just mm-hmm. knowing what happened, why, what happened to all these people, what mm-hmm. happened to their families, right? You know, what was the yeah, that was something they didn't even discover. Right. Like I didn't, I don't, I, I don't think I've heard out of all the tourist traps, out of all the information I was given, I don't think I've actually heard. I, and I know some people were released, and that was the mm-hmm. whole overall aesthetic. Well, if you confess to being a witch, they would let you live, but then consecrate you to be like all, the only people who died were the people who claimed innocence the people who actually said they were witches live i do it i'm yeah. like well i'm a witch so okay. and the most people would most people did. be scared of me but i wonder <laughs> what happened to them after the fact were, how were they were they excommunicated were they able to live at different places like i, mm-hmm. I just feel like there's a story inside of a story here yeah. or something something right i feel like there's a story inside of a story here and amount of files is going to uncover it so mm-hmm. at some point we are going to have some more information for you guys and we're going to give you a salem witch Aftermath. I think we're going to do an, uh, a second episode mm-hmm. and go into the aftermath of Salem. You know, yeah. what happened mm-hmm. after the fact immediately, those first 10, 20 years after all of this happened. And what year did it become commercialized? Like, that, when did I, it and, really and, just and start? And I figured on the investigative track we might find that. Actually, right. what year was it allowed to be spoken of? Because uh, oh. for a while it was yeah. sh- shut down the city right. records. So we're going right. to have a lot. We have a lot of questions, and I'm sure mm-hmm. you do too. Please pay attention. And um, we'll let you know when the second part of this um, communication is going to be coming out. Uh, thank you all for joining us. It's so much fun. I don't want to leave you guys. Aww. Aww. <laughs> and uh, thanks for joining the Amalgam Files. Um, this is your street team here in Bedford, Massachusetts, on our way back to Salem for our last yeah. run. Yes. Thank you for being here with us, and we can't wait to know how you guys enjoyed the cast.